Sponsored by Squarespace, where you can make awesome looking websites. I'm a little ambivalent when it comes to 3D printing with resin. I love the freedom it gets, I love how it opens new doors, how it decentralizes miniature production, and how that you can get pretty much any miniature in no time at a fraction of the cost. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. But that's for another day. But I hate that it's smelly, I hate that it's messy, I hate to have failed prints, I hate to clean the vat, I hate all the tools I need, I hate working with the resin, I hate working with the 3D printers, I hate slicing miniatures, I hate supporting the miniatures, I hate making calibration prints, pretty much I hate everything except for getting awesome prints. But lately I've been on a roll <laughs> and recently you saw me print the great Gargan. And that's just one of the things because I've kind of gone ballistic. I sort of created like an entire fancy world. We made like nine figures and I've been printing those and having a lot of fun actually printing these minis. I'm gonna tell you more about those some other day because that's in the future, but I'm really excited about it. And I just thought that I would share with you the things that made me enjoy printing more now than I have done ever before. And stick around to the end, because at the end of this video, I have a seventh one that made my prints a lot better. So you really want to stick around and watch that. But now, let's go. Number one cleaning the vat. You are inevitably going to get failed prints and when you get that you're going to mess up the next print and the print after that because you're going to have small particles inside of the vat and stuff just left over at the bottom of the vat. And I hate emptying the vat and like filtering it through these like filters to get all of the stuff out. Cleaning the FEP using IPA and then scratching the FEP while I'm cleaning it with IPA and tissues. But then Uncle Jesse made a video that kind of flipped my world upside down. Pretty much all of the newer printers have this clean the vat function. It pretty much means that they turn on the screen full on and create sort of like a film at the bottom of the FEP, which means that pretty much all of the particles that are left in the vat have sunk into the bottom. And when you turn the screen on, it becomes an entire film that goes across the whole thing. And that film you can super easily remove. And to make things easier, if you have old leftover supports or something like that, you can just put it at the bottom of the vat. And with that, when the resin is cured from this cleaning program, you can easily remove it with this handle thing. That's actually just old sprue bits that you threw away. Number two. Okay, this point is kind of sponsored, but I guess not at the same time. Here's the thing. When you have a YouTube channel that do miniatures, a lot of 3D printing brands are going to send you printers. And throughout the last two and a half years, I've had 10 printers from six different brands. And these are printers that I can borrow and try out for videos or use as long as I want. And there's one brand of those that just have stuck out for me, and that is Frozen. For me, all of their printers have just worked. Since I got the first one, the Frozen Mini, about one and a half year ago, it's pretty much the only printers that I've been using in videos. And the reason why I'm biased is obviously because I get to use these for free. And since the Mini, I have their 4K Mini, I also have the Mega 4K, and then the Mighty 8K. And hopefully soon, we're gonna get to try out the 8K Mini, the small printer with super high resolution. I'm super excited about that. With these, I've probably done over 100 prints and I've barely had any fails. When I've had fails, it's because I've used brand new resins that I hadn't really set up properly. But other than that, it, they've been just amazing, to be honest. So that has made my life a lot more fun because I just know that whenever I start a print, it's just gonna come out looking amazing. Another fun fact with Frozen is that they are one of the few brands that don't really ask us to include them in videos. They send them and if we wanna use them, we can use them, which I think speaks a lot for their belief in their product, pretty much like asking for nothing in return. So all of this I'm doing out of my own free will. Let's move on. Number three, finding resin that works. And this is similar to the 3D printer one that once you find resins that just work for you, you're going to have a lot more fun. When I started out, I had the Anycubic Echo Resin. I did not enjoy that. I then bought some 3D Prima Resin, some ABS-like style resin, and I did not like that. I got failed prints, it was way too brittle. But then I was sent a Piopoli printer about a year and a half ago, and I was not a huge fan of the printer, but the resin they sent with me was a Piopoli resin. It was called Daft. And with that resin, I have just been having so much fun. It just sticks to the build plate. I have no problems with the supports falling off and stuff like that. And those are the main two things that usually makes my prints fail whenever they do. I've also been trying out the Frozen 4K resin, which have been really good as well. And recently I started working with the M70 resin, which everyone raves to be like the best, most detailed resin and I just can't make it work. So this day I've been doing like seven test prints to make it work and it's not working. So I'm kind of 
giving up on life right now. So that really shows you how big of a difference it is when you find resins that just works and how much more fun it is compared to when you can't make it work. And resin does have a big part of that, just the same way that the printer had. On top of that, these three resins that I just mentioned, they barely smell compared to say the 3D Prima or the Anycubic resin. So that's a big upside for me. So guys, before we jump on number four, I just want to thank Squarespace for believing in me as a creator. And together with the patrons, over the last six months, they've been sponsoring this channel for, I think, 15 videos. How awesome is that? And the cool thing is, I've been using Squarespace since way before they started sponsoring me, using them to make my own website. And if you are a creator, or maybe just a creative person who wants to make a website to display what you do, or sell something online, Squarespace has a perfect platform for you. They have great looking award-winning templates that you can use to make your own website. And I know nothing about programming, but it's still super easy to make stuff look amazing. If you want to try it out yourself, you can go to squarespace.com squidmar. And with that, you have a 30 days completely free trial. No strings attached. You don't have to enter any banking info or anything. And if you liked it, you built the perfect website to display your creativity then you just use the code SQUIDMAR and then they give you 10% off the entire first website or domain purchase. Thanks again Squarespace for being the best sponsor we've had the entire year and for believing in us and letting us do whatever you want with your sponsor time and in the videos. So let's go to number four. Number four, again, a little bit biased because this is a product that I was sent and that was a cleaning station from Anycubic. I've had a few Anycubic printers and some of them have worked. The one that I purchased before I started this channel was the Anycubic i3 Mega, but then I was sent the Photon and lately a Viper and none of them really worked the way I wanted to. The last one, the Viper, didn't even work at all. But the cleaning station had been working really well and I've been really enjoying it. It's one of these things where I used to have these like glass yards and shake them around and they started getting messy and it just took a lot of time to clean and I was not having fun. But then since we got the cleaning station, I just put them in the bucket and I turn on the button and it starts cleaning and it cleans for as long as I want to and the prints come out a lot cleaner than they used to so I'm having a lot more fun printing with that. It also have a really nice curing function where you have this light and it just spins around and stuff just gets super clean. Again, a lot better than my homemade sort of like garbage can filled with tin foil, which looked terrible and just moved around whenever I was using it and it was no fun. So I've been really enjoying using that. But for bigger prints, as an example with the Gargant, we used a big frozen curing station and it's a dream. You just press a button and it starts curing and spinning around. It makes sure that all of the sides of the print are well cured and you can select yourself how long you want it to spin and be turned on. When I had my homemade sort of thing, I always forgot the lamp on for like two days until I remember I had prints in them, but now I don't have to worry about any of that. Number five, finding the right tools and the right working process. As an example, these plastic spatulas that I use when I clean the FEP, and a big jug of IPA to clean different prints, funnels, filters, stuff, more spatulas. And the best tool I found is this red button. I heard that you can click it and, and, and then you're subscribed to my channel. This is something that took me a lot of time because a lot of the things that are available in the US where a lot of my 3D printing friends are, are not available here in Sweden. Are you telling me that you can't buy these pickle jars from Amazon in Sweden? Yeah. Dude, that sucks. And I've had friends where the FAP of the vat have broken. So all of the resin at the bottom of the printer just seeped out and destroyed the printer and pretty much the entire room, the floor and the furniture that it was on. So I've had a legged fear for that. But then the other week I was on Ikea and I found this big tray that's originally for shoes. You have it at the entrance when someone comes to visit and they place their shoes there to not drag in any of the dirt and dust. And it was just perfect fit to fit two printers on there. And this was one of those things that just made me so much more relaxed for turning on the printer and then leaving the room without having to be afraid of resin leaking out everywhere and destroying the room. And just getting rid of all of these small stressful steps where stuff breaks or it doesn't clean the way it's supposed to do or the spatula scratches the bottom of the FEP, stuff like that is gonna make your printing so much more fun. 
And number six, this is kind of the last one. We have the bonus one later, but pre-supported minis. Look, I'm gonna put this out there. Supporting miniatures is horrible. It sucks. And when I started printing with resin about two years ago, most of the brands that made 3D printable figures hadn't supported them, so you had to make your own supports. But all of the patrons that are available now that make high-end figures have pre-supported miniatures supported by professional services, which means that you can just slap the miniature into the slicing software and just put the printer on and it's gonna look amazing. Especially if you calibrated it with these calibrating tools, which are actually a lot easier than you think it is. And that just made printing a lot more fun for me. And before I go to share that one trick that just made my printing look a lot better, I want to thank all of the patrons who support this channel. I love you guys. Without you, I would not be able to do this full time. Special thanks to all of the top patrons. And if you want to help this channel out, you can go check out the Patreon in the video description and you get to join me and about 700 other people on a Discord chat. You can also find all of the tools that I recommend down in the video description. But now, the final one. Lower lift speeds on the printer. Again, look when I get started, I was just so excited about getting prints out. So when I found the figure I wanted to have, I wanted it done in three hours, but I also got a lot of fails because of it. So while before I used to have 75 millimeters per second, I now have dropped it down to about 40, 45 for the initial layers and then up to about 50, 55 after that. On the bigger printers, of course, it's slower than on the smaller ones, but this made a huge difference. Because the force that pulls up from the FEP film is very strong, the slower speed is, the less tension you have. And God damn, there's a lot less printing fails. So that's my go-to trick whenever someone says they have failed prints, just lower the lift speed. Also my dudes, a major thanks to Greg from 3D Printing Pro and Danny from 3D Printing Tabletop that always picks up the phone whenever I have an issue with the printer. Lately it's been a lot less, but thanks anyway. Have a great day. Bye bye.